right, it is day four. It is almost four o'clock, but I've spent the morning editing yesterday's vlog. I have also tried to export it three different times now and it's not working. So I get to restart my computer and hopefully that will fix it. I've also been catching up on some YouTube videos and playing a little bit of Animal Crossing. But I think while I'm waiting on my computer to restart, um, and for my video to export, I'm going to be starting on queering the stage. All right, so the video is finally exported. I don't know what was wrong with it, but the place that it kept stalling had something wrong with the video, but thankfully it was only like two seconds of the video, so nothing is severely wrong. So now it's uploading, and I have gotten through the first roughly half. It really looks like more of a third, but it's about half of the chapters um, in Queering the Stage. And this is really interesting. It seems like the majority of what Jack Shamblin does is like doing activism and awareness work through art. So the book starts out with a little bit of framing. The very first chapter is talking about the social framing for all of it. So a lot of it focuses on suicide rates of LGBT people and stuff like that. And then the next one kind of talks about their art style. It is pretty non-traditional performance art that includes bodies and nudity. Um, a, a piece of it incorporates the erotic and talking about the erotic, I think. Uh, but it extends even beyond that with a lot of what um, is being talked about. But I think queering the erotic in a lot of ways, so queering the erotic with pain, which makes sense given the context. I don't know, I feel like I'm gonna just talk and say way too much about stuff that I don't know about. I'm not really familiar with performance art, and I've only read two of the plays and monologues so far. But basically, this is framed with those, and then in front of each play there's also additional framing. Some of the framing talks about who was involved with it and where it was performed. Some of that goes kind of over my head because I'm not familiar with the people or the places, um, but a piece of the framing also talks about what they ended up researching um, and the different things that in inspired these pieces. And it's really cool. I've actually got a few things that I want to look up after knowing kind of what inspired some of these pieces. So that's what I've got for the moment. I do want to read more on this, but I also want to get my Reading Rush tag video up, so I'll probably edit that at some point. I also should probably go grocery shopping. It's raining again, but it's not raining that heavily, so I'll probably look up the weather or something. But yeah, that's what I have for the moment. Okay, so I'm in the middle of, I'm, I'm grabbing fast food before I do grocery shopping, and I was driving, and I just had a realization about the seep. Like, I thought so much about, like, what it had to say about humanity, um, and society in different ways, but it did not occur to me that it's also symbolic of religion. Like, all of the stuff that happens in it, I don't want to say anything because I don't want to do spoilers, but, like, I don't know, my mind just, like, blew a little bit again thinking about it, so that's the only update I have. I thought I would give a little bit of an update just because it is starting to get kind of late, I have not read anything. I have gone to the store, I've messed around on the internet, and it has been long enough since I've eaten that I've wanted a snack. So I'm going to probably watch um, maybe a couple of short YouTube videos, and then I'm going to be working on some stuff for the classes that I'm going to be teaching tomorrow. If I do end up having the time and energy to read after all of that, I will definitely check back in. Well, it is nearly 2 a.m. I didn't actually end up needing to put much together for class tomorrow because I thought that I had had a class that I needed to do more for, but that's later. So that was nice, but I ended up editing my tag video. Um, I'm going to wait to put it up until I have the other vlog captioned, though. But it'll be up by the time this is up, so. But I spent the rest of the time catching up on YouTube videos and working on my spreadsheet that has all of the books that I've read this year, or is going to when I'm done with it, um, alongside a bunch of different things about it, uh, what type of queer representation it has, what kind of genre it is, what the authors are like, so that I have that spread. I really feel like I probably should have 
just look to see if somebody else had one that I liked instead of just making my own and totally reinventing the wheel. Um, I feel like there's maybe some stuff that I didn't think about, but it's fine. It will work. Oh, talks. My computer's on my lap. You can't sit on my computer. Why? She hasn't been up here this whole time, and all of a sudden I start talking, and she wants to sit on me. I don't get it. Kitty, why? Strap clogs. But I'm going to finish the rest of my lemon and ginger tea, and then I'm going to go to bed so that I can get up in the morning. So, sorry this hasn't been a super, like, reading-heavy reading vlog. Um, I think I read, like, a little under 30 pages today, but I think that's fine. It's not like I'm behind on book count, not that that's the point. But hopefully I'll get to read some tomorrow. I do have a few classes, but after class, I don't think I have any particular plans. So we'll see how it goes. It is day five of the reading rush. Uh, that means that it's Friday, and Fridays tend to be my more busier days with my online classes. I think I have three today. Um, yes, I have three today. I've already done one of them though. It is about 10, 12. My next one doesn't start for another 45 minutes. In between classes, I'm going to be editing the captions on my day three vlog. And then once I get done with that, I will then start reading between classes. Here's another update throughout the day. Um, it's about 4.30. I finished doing my classes. I also finished the captions on my day three vlog. Um, and then I started on eco-socialism. I am on page 16, according to my Kindle. I don't know if that's the same as the book. Um, I got through the prologue and started chapter one. There's not really much to say so far because a lot of the prologue was just talking about the background and like, it gave me a lot of resources for who to check out and different books to read if I want to read more on it. So that's nice. But I'm just now getting into the actual meat of the book to see what all it's really going to say. So I'm just gonna take some time to read for a little while. I have some tea, it is orange blossom green tea, which is interesting. I think I might have let it steep for too long. I think it tastes a little bit too much like perfume. That might be the orange blossom. It's not bad, um, but it's just different. I actually ended up putting a little bit of creamer in here just to see what that did. It's hazelnut creamer, which probably I think I would have preferred it to be vanilla, but it was the closest thing to sugar that I have. I need to get like some sugar and honey probably. I was literally just at the store so I could have gotten those things and I just didn't um but I got creamer so it's what I'm using. Anyways y'all don't care that much about what I'm drinking so I'm just gonna go read. <laughs> So a little bit of an update, it is about 9 o'clock, but I've gotten to about page 35 or so. I was reading along with Little Book Owl who had a live stream up on their channel. However, my Kindle kept messing up, and I hope it's just because this is almost a decade old. So I'm just hoping that it's a little quirk and not that it's totally dying. So far, eco-socialism is pretty interesting. It kind of makes me feel like I need to reread Marx a little bit because some of the talking points I'm not 100% like remembering, but overall it's really interesting and compelling. So I'm looking forward to being able to finish it. It is taking me a little bit longer to read just because it is more dense. But for now, I think I'm going to join in with some of the reading rushes Twitter sprints. I saw that CC from Problems of a Book Nerd is going to be hosting, um, and that's starting at about three minutes. So I think I'm going to go back to reading Queering the Stage a little bit for those.
It is 10.02. I just finished the last of the reading sprints that are going on right now. I finished Queering the Stage, and this was a really neat read. I am super glad that the author reached out to me about this book because I had a really interesting time reading this. There are a lot of really neat things that can be pulled thematically and symbolically from these different plays, and I think that having the context was really helpful. Each one of them impacted me in a very particular way. I think the one that hit me the most emotionally was um, the first one, which was a pretty short monologue about um, Tim Bailey. Uh, that monologue was based off of one of the people who wanted to use their body after death in order to make a political statement. Um, he passed away due to complications of AIDS, and of course, um, kind of during the time of the AIDS epidemic, uh, particularly around the late 80s and early 90s, there are people who did want to be used in order to make a statement so that their death can make an impact. There are a number of things that you could look up that are videotaped. There are people who their caskets were walked around through streets. There are people who had their ashes spread at the White House. A lot of really impactful stuff, but he based one of the monologues off of that. Then there was a play that was making kind of a statement about homophobia and law, and it kind of integrated historical homophobia as well as what was at the time current anti-gay laws and things like that, and that was really interesting. I think the one that hit me the most on a personal level was probably Therma, which is about this woman who is either gay or bisexual, but closeted and in a relationship with a man. At least that's what I gathered from it. There's a lot of really interesting stuff. I'm not going to go through and like pick everything out, but that's probably the one that I would want to see live the most out of all of these. Um, I think partly because I feel like in only a very slightly different world, I could have been a Therma, you know? Kind of stuck in a place like that and not able to get out. But yeah, I really enjoy this book, and I really, really appreciate Jack Shamblin for sending me this. So I think at this point, I may take a little bit of a YouTube break and catch up on some things, and then I think I'm going to break into The Black Condition featuring Narcissus. Narcissus? I can never say that word right, but it's fine. All right, it is actually now the next day but I thought that I would pop on and um, wrap up a little bit of last night. I got to about page 10 of The Black Condition featuring Narcissus. Um, it's good so far. It's interesting. A lot of the poetry is definitely autobiographical alongside kind of the mythology imagery. So far, it's definitely talking a lot about appearance, which is kind of to be expected with that sort of metaphor, um, and kind of about the trans experience. I still have a decent bit of the way through the book to go, um, and I'm thinking that I'm going to be able to finish that today, and I'll probably also work on eco-socialism. 